Hey guys, what's going on? Chad here from Shifting Lanes. Thank you so much for watching. That is my Project IS300. And while she still technically isn't running, we're aiming to fix that in the coming days. Why is that a problem? I sold the M3. So I had to relieve Greg of his most prized possession. And no, I'm not talking about his commemorative Patrick Waugh signed jockstrap. That's right, I've been driving the V70R. Alrighty, so what do we got? We'll go into too much detail because most of you are watching this because you love our Volvo. We have a Volvo V70R station wagon. It's got a 2.5 liter straight five turbocharged engine up front, all wheel drive system, and most importantly, three pedals and you can row your own gears. Now, as many of you know, Greg loves this thing more than quite possibly his own child. He definitely loves it more than his Aston Martin. The question I have is, well, why? And can I figure out why? As in, is this car so good that it justifies Greg's undying and unwavering love? So we're gonna go for a drive and try to find out. <laughs> Manufacturers are making less and less of them new, preferring to flood the world with more and more crossovers. While us enthusiasts, we say if, when it comes to practicality, when it comes to a vehicle that you can take the kids to their sports practice game, band lesson, whatever, and still be able to have fun, nothing beats a wagon. And yet the wagon is dying. Why is that? Nobody's buying them. That's just it. Nobody wants to buy them because crossovers are doing the job better. They're better in all kinds of weather, even if you have all-wheel drive like this Volvo. Me, personally, I'm station wagon all the way, so I should, in theory, really like this car. You can have all of the fun of a sports sedan and have all the practicality of an SUV or come close enough to where you can justify purchasing this type of vehicle to the wife, to the girlfriends, to your significant other. How practical is this Volvo? Well, I could load it up with sports equipment. I could put soccer balls, baseballs, baseball bats, catcher's gear, whatever. Could throw all that in the back. Or there is a certain Lexus that is in dire need of some new wheels and tires. I prefer to show you just how practical a vehicle is by putting other vehicles parts in it. As you can see, with the seats folded down, there is plenty of room for four rims, four tires, the lot. I will actually be installing those on the car in two days, real time. Not sure what that's gonna equate to in YouTube time, but definitely within the next week or so. Now, if you're one of our more loyal followers, you will know why we purchased this car and all its little foibles that Greg was able to find out. Big thing is with this car, it is a manual. It's got three pedals, six forward gears, one reverse gear, and it's all under your control. That makes this thing really cool because it's a station wagon with a manual. In any car, that's a fairly rare occurrence. The other thing this car came with from a previous owner was it came with BC Racing coilovers. Now the downside to that is we lost 4C functionality. 4C struts are no longer in this vehicle. 4C is a really cool 
system in that it allows you to tell the car just how stiff, just how athletic you want it to be. Comfortable, sport, or in the Volvo's case, advanced. It was actually a really cool system. We did a video tearing down our old 4C system. Hanson, our resident engineer, walked you through kind of how the process works and why our old one broke. But the upshot to coilovers is basically great handling all the time. Usually when you install coilovers, you run the risk of ruining the ride because as in life, there's always a trade-off. So you get a car that handles better, stiffer, much better through the twisties, usually the ride is going to suffer, especially with coilovers, because there's no real on-the-fly adjustability with them. The thing with these coilovers and their BC is they make the car handle great. It feels really composed at turn in. Now it is a front engine, front wheel drive biased vehicle, so you do have to kind of adjust how you drive. For me specifically, coming from the majority of the cars I drove were rear wheel drive. The M3 was particularly amazing at turning. This you kind of have to adjust. You have to take a little bit of a wider line, take a little bit of a slower entry speed, all that stuff you would normally do in a vehicle of this type. That said, once you make that adjustment, the car handles fantastically. It's a really, it really inspires confidence. It really makes you want to push into the corners harder and harder. The downside to the handling, and this has nothing to do with the, the coilovers, is that the steering, while informative, giving you the feedback you want, for my taste, it's really too far from lock to lock. So while you're just kind of floating around going through the you know, fast bends, it's fine. But when you're coming up to a, the sharper corners, you find yourself really having to crank on the wheel to get it to, to dive in the way you wanted it. Again, I'm coming from the M3, and that car has what I would describe as one of the best turn-ins of any car I've ever driven. It, to expect this is a little unfair, but a little faster rack wouldn't go unnoticed. Another interesting quirk with the handling, and I think this also kind of ties in with the stuff that's kind of broken on this car, uh, is I'm not 100% sure that the Haldex all-wheel drive system is working 100% as it should. Volvo guys, please correct me if I'm wrong, but this thing, it just, once that turbo comes on song, <laughs> it, there's a ton of torque steer. I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting that. Uh, I expected kind of the all-wheel drive system to bring everything in line. So that's what leads me to believe that the all-wheel drive system is kind of either on the fritz or just not working. It's the ultimate sleeper. Nobody, nobody expects this thing to be what it is from a casual perspective. One of the, one of the coolest things and things I can't get over when driving this car is the looks people give it. You can tell that they heard the exhaust from a distance. And then when they saw the car, they their brain had trouble connecting the noise to the vehicle that was in front of them. Station wagons aren't supposed to sound like that. Volvos aren't supposed to sound like that. It's just a really cool experience. It's one of those things where you see the look on their face like, wait, what? Wait, that's a Volvo? It's super cool, and that's something I don't think I'd ever get tired with the car. The amazing thing about this car is, and we've done now two videos on it, is the... <laughs> is that 8.8 Fab 3-inch turbo-back exhaust. It sounds amazing that beautifully welded, beautifully put together exhaust with a 2.5 liter five cylinder and it makes a completely awesome and unique noise. There just aren't many cars these days that sound like this and I'm at a loss for words in how to describe it. It sounds, you know, 
part V10 or mini V10 and part Audi Quattro Group B rally car. It's <laughs> It's just awesome. Uh, if you want more of that noise, click somewhere up here. And we did an entire video of zero talking. Well, shouldn't say zero talking, but very little talking and all exhaust noise. You really got to check it out. This thing sounds absolutely amazing. sensitive subject matter for me. If you followed anything on the M3, you'll know that that interior really got under my skin. It was so bad. All of it needed to be replaced. This Volvo is of a similar vintage. It's, I think, a couple years newer, and the interior is in much, much, much better shape. No cracking in the plastics. Yes, the leather is a little worn, but that's relatively easy to fix. The center console isn't falling apart. Now it may be early 2000s spec, but it hasn't aged terribly. Yes, when you look at it, it looks a bit dated, but it doesn't look stupid. It doesn't look like something you say, oh my gosh, I have absolutely got to get rid of this as soon as humanly possible. And it's really logically put together. The buttons they're all a reasonable size, so if you're wearing gloves when it's cold or anything like that, you can easily change the temperature settings, the radio settings, all of that. Yeah. Even with coilovers, that didn't hurt too bad despite my... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Back to the original question. Have I figured out why Greg loves this car so much? The answer to that is, yes, there's a lot to love about this car. There's a lot of really cool, quirky, without being stupid and weird, features that make this a very interesting and very fun car to drive. Do I love it as much as Greg does? No, but then again, I don't really think it's possible to love anything as much as Greg loves this Volvo. Would I buy one? At a certain stage in life, absolutely, yes. If, let's say for example, I had a family and my alternatives were some boring crossover or God, God forbid, a minivan, I'd scoop this up in a second. All wheel drive, plenty of space as we showed before, and most importantly, it's fun to drive. So when I'm not with the kids, not doing dumb stuff with them, well, I shouldn't say dumb, but their stuff, I can have fun, I can go out on a favorite road and, and blast around and, and enjoy myself. Would I buy this today, being as depressingly single as I am now? I don't know. Uh, I love the car, so I would absolutely, if this was an option, I'd have to consider it. But I still prefer my cars rear wheel drive and naturally aspirated. Sure, the five cylinder howls. Sure, all wheel drive is great for every other sort of situation where the weather's not great, snow, and so on. But I've had rear wheel drive cars for the better part of a decade now, and only twice have I not been able to get where I needed to go because of weather. So for me, the trade off isn't, isn't really that significant. The immediacy of turn in on a good rear wheel drive chassis, the just the sharpness of it. The Volvo is great, but it's not as sharp as something where the rear wheels do the drive, the front wheels do the steering. It's it's really good, but it's not as good, and that's kind of where my preferences lie now. That said, I totally get the Volvo enthusiast now. I kind of didn't understand you guys before driving this for far, very long. The Volvos are safe, Volvos are heavy-ish. Uh, Volvos are sensible. They're far too sensible to be any fun. And yet, this thing has completely changed my mind on that. So, 
it's a great car and I can't wait to do more fun stuff to it and make it even better. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, hit that thumbs up button, and if you want more Volvo content, hit the little bell. Get notified anytime we post a new video. I'm Chad. If you want to find me on social media, find me at, at Chenity83, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Shifting lanes everywhere, at Shifting Lanes. If you want to rep the Volvo, want to rep the wagon love, go on to our Teespring page, buy yourself a Team Dad Wagon shirt. They're awesome, and it helps us do cool stuff like this Volvo and cool stuff to this Volvo. If you really want to help us with our builds, help us do them a little quicker, head over to our Patreon page. It is in its infancy, but uh, throw us a buck. We'll eventually get rewards on there, and any dollar we can raise helps us do more cool stuff to these cars and helps us do them quicker, which is really nice. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I'll catch you next time.